Wonderful good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jochen Steiger. I'm the chief editor of Commodity TV and here in partnership with Dukas Copy TV. And uh, we want to talk today with N-Wave Corporation. With me here is uh, John Budreski, the executive chairman. And yeah, this is uh, probably by now the hidden world market, new world market champion in dehydration. And uh, hopefully they will develop the things what they say. John, very warm welcome. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for having me today. And wave. Yes. Well, I know the company since 2009, and I'm very impressed uh, what you have done so far. And dehydration is your theme. Maybe give us a short introduction to the company. Enwave has a proprietary dehydration technology. It's an applied technology company. Uh, the technology allows for the removal of water from organic materials without freezing, cooking, or oxidizing. So it's the purest form of removing water without having any collateral effects on the organic material. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. How do you do that? We put the material into a vessel that has a vacuum in it, and then we introduce a small amount of microwaves, and the microwaves help the water to boil off, but at less than 100 degrees Celsius temperature, and um, it removes the water uh, more quickly and more cleanly. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So here in the back, we see some of the machinery you are, yeah. Yes customizing and you have partners who are doing that, right? And can you give us an idea how large are they or what, what sizes you have so far? We have, uh, let's talk about power consumption and let's talk about mm -hmm. physical sizes. Mm -hmm. So we have two kilowatt machines, which are your home microwave is a one kilowatt machine. Mm -hmm. We have a two kilowatt machine, which would be the size of a washer and dryer mm -hmm. stacked. We have a 10 kilowatt machine, which would be the size of um, a Volkswagen. And then we have a 100 kilowatt machine, which would be about 13 meters long and about two meters in diameter. Like the sizes that we saw, right? Of equipment, yes. Uh -huh. Great, fantastic. Um, let's come to your products, what you can do hydrate, because I think this is something which really convinced me in the first instant when I tried your uh, dried blueberries. Yeah, Those are raspberries, by yes. the way. So what is the advantage when it is dried with your method? And by the way, it's patented, right? It is a patented method. It's protected by 17 different patents. Uh, the, there's multiple advantages, I think, for fruit in particular, and a lot of things that have high, nutri have high nutritive value. Uh, we can take the water out without destroying the nutritive value. So if you mm. air dry... As you can see here, they look you, still pretty good. Yes, they are. If you air dry a blueberry, you will destroy a lot of the nutritive value of blueberries, similar for cranberries and many other fruits. Mm -hmm. So we can take the water out, we don't oxidize it, we don't cook it, and it retains its essential vitamins and minerals and, and the other nutrients. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And those are here some uh, pineapples also. By the way, pineapples are one of my favorites. I tried everything, every product you produced so far. That's, this is outstanding. Um, I am told those are the best tasting dried pineapples in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, the picture here is bay leaves yes. dried, and I think you did a yeah, partnership with a we, company. We have, Can you uh, explain a little bit about We it? have a, a partner who has purchased one of our machines located in uh, Napa, California. They dry bay leaves using our technology. The typical bay leaves that you would find in a grocery store are likely to come from Turkey. They have 90% of the world's supply. Those bay leaves are air dried. Uh, they tend to be, turn from green to gray. They tend to crumble. They tend to curl and they tend to uh, have lost uh, a volatile oil that creates a lot of the flavor and aroma of a bay leaf. These bay leaves, however, are flat, they're green, they're supple, and they retain the volatile oil. And so they're probably twice as powerful as the bay leaves that you'd buy typically. And uh, the part that I like about it is they sell for about four times as much and there's a very healthy operating margin in the business. So we are allowing this particular person to produce a new and superior product in a spice market. Mm -hmm. Margin is one of the keywords, of course, um, because why should the industry use your technology? I mean, what are the advantages for the industry using your technology despite, let's say, freeze drying or spray drying? I mean, in real dollars. What we're, what we're discovering is that uh, our partners are, are using our technology in a disruptive fashion. We can make a better buy dried banana chip than the next company. But I'm not certain the consumer wants a better dried banana chip because they're satisfied with the ones that they have. Where our technology allows for greater margins in the producer is we produce a far superior product that's differentiated. Uh, the Napa Valley, Napa Mountain bay leaves are an example of that. Bonduelle, a French concern, is putting out something called dehydro frozen, which is a superior frozen vegetable. And we're seeing Hormel Foods, who's going to introduce a, uh, a spam snack 
uh, will then go and compete with other dried meat products. Mm -hmm. So this is where they get their enhanced margins because the product is far superior and it doesn't compete with itself, it competes with a different food or a different type of uh, meat or vegetable. Mm -hmm. And as you also say in your presentation, uh, you are faster. So that means to me when you are faster, you have less energy consumption, right? That's correct. So we are so faster. So it saves a lot of money. Air, air drying takes time as does freeze drying. Freeze, freeze drying has a high capital component because you have to freeze the material to minus 40 and then you have to put it into a vacuum and to remove the water generally takes uh, 24 to 48 hours. Our process has less capital required, it has less energy consumption, and we can remove the water in typically less than six hours. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Let's come to one of your, I would say, prime products you have, because I'm totally addicted to it, and it looks quite funny what the, what the lady is here holding in the hand, but uh, this is dry cheese, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. So how, how do you do it? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what that product is. We are a technology company, not a food company, but to establish uh, the power of our technology, we went into a joint venture to make cheese. We don't know of other places in the world that can simply dry cheese. People will cook cheese or do other things which change the taste. This is cheese with the water removed, and there's a little refinement to the technology which allows it to puff a little bit. And so this is cheese, it's slightly puffed. It starts out with cubes that are about uh, three quarters of a centimeter on a side, and it is a snack food and it will compete with uh, other high protein snack foods, except this will be one of the healthiest ones you can get because it, it's not a, a meat product and that sort of thing. It is just cheese. There's no additives to it. It is cheese with the water removed, put into those pouches and sold against other competing protein snacks that aren't nearly as healthy. Mm -hmm. And I've seen uh, you have now, what, 2,800 grocery stores and also a, a large coffee chain with three and a half thousand stores is now selling the stuff, That's right? correct. This business, oh. this business started out as a U.S. United States business. Yeah. We started the machine operation last July and we've been putting it into grocery stores. We've been doing some direct channels and starting this summer it'll be into uh, a well-known coffee chain where it'll go into 3,500 stores as a demonstration or a trial item. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, as we hear also with uh, Dukas Copy TV, where we talk uh, to finance people, yes. uh, let's come to some numbers. Okay. Yeah, what, do you, what can you generate with the machinery you are selling? First of all, what an income? Yes. What royalty is possible? I know you cannot say exact number per yep. machine, that's, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But just to give the viewer an idea, what is possible with your scalable revenue model? Let's, let's talk about the, uh, the, st the structure of the strategy we have for the business. We manufacture machines and we sell those machines for a small profit. In US dollars, the machine would be sold for something like $1.5 million. Each machine is, is, is a customized for its location, so the price changes a little bit. Uh, that machine takes about six months to manufacture, so we tie up some capital in building that machine. We get it back on sale. Uh, we then charge a royalty on the throughput of that machine. And you have a margin on the machine, of course. We have a margin on the machine, and it's our, our desire to have the margin on the machine pay all of our overhead costs of running the company. Mm -hmm. We then would have a single-digit royalty on the throughput of that machine. So if the machine does $100 in a day, we would get somewhere, uh, you know, a single-digit, five, seven, eight dollars, three dollars, whatever it is, it depends on the industry, uh, that we would collect off of that. But our, our mathematics say that if a machine is running at full capacity uh, through a year, we would collect royalties in the low hundreds of thousands of dollars off of that machine. Mm -hmm. So our model is sell a machine for a profit, have that small profit pay for our overheads, and, and make our corporate profit on the royalties that come from a portfolio of machines. Mm -hmm. Great. How many machines you have sold so far? We have four larger machines in operation and three smaller machines in operation. Mm -hmm. and, and how so much is in the beginning? We're just at the beginning of commercialization. Exactly. But and how many is by now in the pipeline? Can you say something about it? Um, I can tell you that in for some of those who have purchased machines from us, we're anticipating there'll be repeat orders, mm -hmm. and we're also working with other research collaboration uh, companies to sell more machines to, or sell initial and then subsequent machines to them. It's hard to define what the pipeline is because we're in research phase and that's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, we're very comfortable we're gonna sell a lot more machines. <laughs> very well, yeah, but well, that should be a real target. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, overhead costs, you just n mentioned it, yeah? What is the overhead in the company? It's around 200 to $250,000 a that's month. That's quite lean. Um, I think it's okay. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, we have 30 employees. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's really lean to me. Yeah. So that means, uh, let's make an average calculation, like when you sell between 12 and 15 machines, you should cover That's correct. the overhead per year, That's right? That's correct. And uh, let's say this is makeable. Yes, it is. 
Mm -hmm, fantastic. And that means also from the royalty standpoint, let's say if you have a f if you have sold 50 machines, yes. where do you see a royalty like 10, 15 million a year? Uh, that's something. If we said 200,000 machine times 50 machines, yes, 10 to 15 million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And the overhead still stays close to that? Yeah, or we a would have bit to expand maybe? a little bit to, to manufacture that level of machines, yeah. but we assemble machines from uh, parts that are fabricated within the vicinity of our, our facility in, uh, in Vancouver, Canada. So we would have to add a few people, but not a lot of people to get to that volume of machines. Right, fantastic. And so then the royalty comes in, the royalty becomes a dividend. Yeah. We would use the royalty to pay a dividend on the shares. Wow, I think shareholders would love to hear that. I'm a shareholder <laughs> and I like hearing it. Great, fantastic. John, thank you very much, all the best, honestly. I tried all your products. As said, I love the cheese most. That's Good. one of my top favorites. And I think you will have a big success because uh, uh, when, when I showed this also to friends and uh, a lot of other people, and I had nobody who said, no, I don't like it. And that's to me, that's a very nice test result. Yes. This, this is a very powerful technology and has applicability in fruit, vegetables, meat, also in the pharmaceutical industry. This is one place where we can demonstrate the power of it, but it can be applied in many other situations. Fantastic. So we hope to hear soon more from you. And uh, yeah, keep selling machines, I would say. Thank you very much. <laughs> John, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was John Budreski, the executive chairman of N-Wave. Well, you heard it. It's a great royalty model. And uh, also the, uh, yeah, the technologies, it's patented. And it's a proof of concept, as you can see here, in the back with the cheese and with uh, many, many other dried vegetables, with bay leaves, with fruits, etc., meat. And uh, yeah, yeah, technology is working and uh, they start to earn money now. They really started to sell the machines and uh, they are in the market and uh, I'm pretty confident that we're going to make it. So maybe a good idea to check out the company. Thanks. Bye bye from Geneva. That was Commodity TV, Jochen Steiger in partnership with Tukas Copy TV.